to episode 3 of the Columbo podcast. Deadweight. Ian, how are you doing? I'm not too bad this week, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, very well because we have had a fantastic response to the opening two episodes, I believe. Yeah, absolutely fantastic response. I was quite excited about it, actually. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I wasn't sure how successful or otherwise this may be. Would, would there be a market? Would there be an audience? Would we get any feedback? But it seems to have went quite well. So far, so good. Yeah, there's always room for for more, but uh, definitely happy so far. Yeah, having a lot of a uh, lot of feedback from from different people on different platforms. So that's uh, that's really appreciate that. Yeah, and thank you to everyone who's taken the time to do that. It's been great. It has been great. It's been good to uh, it's been good to interact with different people, different Colombo fans, uh, old and young, near and far. Yep, all sorts of folks, and it's been great conversations as well. It has been. How about yourself? Have you been enjoying the, the experience so far? So far, so good as well. Um, it's been really good. I watched Dead Weight this week. You did? I think it um, certainly is an interesting contrast to the two episodes that came before it. Okay. Do you? Well, we won't. We won't try and. Uh, I won't try and presuppose your your views or. No, your we'll opinions. not. We'll not dive in too fast. No. Um, I think before we start with the the summary of this week's episode. Uh, with relation to what I just said there in terms of feedback it's probably worthwhile thanking a couple of people for actively trying to get involved in answering the uh, the trivia question That's right, from, the, from the last trivia week. From, from episode 2 we asked how many Columbo shows did Robert Culp appear in this this caught a few of you out it was a bit of a tricky question it was a horrific, horrific but, question but the reason that it was asked in such a way was because everyone listening is a big Columbo fan if it was a, a straightforward answer There'd be no, there'd be no fun in, in, in that. No challenge. No challenge at all for the, the smart, you know, the smart listeners that we have. So, the answer was in fact five. It was five. And why was it five, Ian? It was five because Robert Culp has appeared as the killer in Columbo on three occasions. He's appeared in a fourth Columbo episode, not as the killer, but he also appeared in an episode of Mrs. Columbo. Ah, not definitely not canon. I think a lot of people would say that does not count, and we are cheating. But it's our competition, we set the rules, <laughs> and that's how it goes. So thanks to, uh, firstly, our friends uh, Robert Reyes and Consumate Culp, who were chatting to us about this on, on Twitter at Colombo Podcast. Yes. So thanks a lot, guys. That was uh, very much appreciated. And, and apologies for catching you just a little bit with that one. Yeah. Uh, also, I think we should say a quick hello to the other Colombo Podcast. Just one more thing. Yes, we've, we've had a little bit of chat on Twitter. They, they're doing a good job over there, and um, I think it looks like we might get to Go and visit them at some point in the new year. Not in person. That would be that would be great. That would be remarkable, but I, I suspect that more in a um, non-physical, tangible sense. A virtual sense. A it? virtual a, visit. A virtual visit. That we'll would be see. Uh, that that'd be good. But uh, yeah, so good luck to those guys over there as well. You should listen to them if you're if you're a Colombo fan. So today we are looking at uh, as as you said or as I said, dead weight. It was definitely you that said that. It was me. Can you give us a, a summary of this episode as you saw it, please, Ian? I can. I watched this episode fairly recently, so it's fresh in my mind and I know exactly what happened. There were actually echoes, I felt, in this episode of the opening show, Murder by the Book. Both of the shows have got a killer motivated by self-preservation, dealing with the presence of a crucial witness. In Dead Weight, we're introduced to Major General Martin Hollister, a distinguished military veteran who has been benefiting from some questionable contracts granted, his, granted to his construction company by Colonel Dutton. These contracts are being investigated, and Dutton visits Hollister to let him know. To protect himself, Hollister kills Dutton, but this is witnessed by a woman looking through his window from a boat. Whereas we saw Ken Franklin spurn Lily Lasanka's romantic overtures a couple of shows ago, this time it's our killer, Hollister, who makes the first move, seeking to neutralise the threat in a different way. Colombo then is left to work out whether his crime has been committed or not, and, if so, whether Hollister can be shown to be responsible. Cheers, Ian. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting episode, this one, uh, and as you alluded to there, uh, unlike a lot of other episodes, I think it um, Columbo is has there's a certain amount of uncertainty. If that's <laughs> a certain amount of uncertainty, there's a certain uh, 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 he's skeptical. He's skeptical. He hadn't been in the first two episodes. Yes, 
um, which is probably you know a bit more realistic um, in terms of working from the information he has at that at, at the current. Point. Well, you'll remember last week I was fairly critical of the fact that Colombo seemed to intuit information that wasn't obviously available to I him. I do, yeah. Whereas this week it was it was not the case. He almost accepted that there hadn't been a crime committed fairly straightforward in a fairly straightforward way near the mm-hmm. beginning of the episode before coming around later on. Yeah, I still think it's um we're seeing the the structure of the show, the character develop and, and it's not yet fully matured. So I think they're trying to you know, find their feet. I think that's quite clear. They haven't quite decided how the character's gonna work or how the show's gonna work. They've got the outlines of the structure they want to use. They know kinda who Columbo is. But everything, both the the show and the character, they're trying to find their feet at this stage, as far as I can see, uh, and they're working through that process okay. at this point. So we start the this episode with, you know, unlike the, the previous episodes, with some music, some credits, um, and f- in fact, I believe this is the only episode of the original run uh, which shows the writer and the director in the opening credits. Okay, it certainly was something that we talked about the last couple of weeks, the, the absence of an opening theme. I'm not sure whether this was a theme or whether it was just backdrop music to the scene, but certainly we opened on a musical note which we hadn't done previously, which was noticeable. And I think we'll come back to this, but for me this was the start of a very different use of music. This episode used music in a very different, I would say maybe a more blunt way than had been the case in the opening two episodes. Okay. We have a woman, well, we see a woman or two women uh, on a on a boat out on a, a marina or a... They're, they're a, at a marina somewhere, yeah. yes. Um, and we see the exterior of a, a very large uh, house with a, a boat moored to it and the American flag flying yeah. um, on, on its pole. We then go to uh, the, the interior of the house and we have a view of a lot of military memorabilia. So we have guns and pictures of guys in uniforms, we have statues and awards. Uh, We also see an open container, a crate, um, with lots of uh, real looking guns, machine guns, etc. lying beside it. Yeah, and it's to be packed away. It's clearly marked that this crate is headed for, I think it's the Memorial Hall Marine Military Institute. Well that was a nice touch. So we were told, we're given this information by a focus or a look at yeah, nobody had even tape. spoken at this point in the episode. Yeah, and I think by this point or this scene, it's a, there's a very economical use of the uh, of of the camera work and storytelling. So we're not, you know, it's only you know ten twenty seconds into it, but we have already have established that the owner of this house is a a military figure. We see from the memorabilia and actually the the final focus in this scene is on a portrait of the yeah just before they go to the portrait of him you see his name and his rank it's also stamped on one of the crates it says um major general martin j hollister usmc ret yeah now neither myself or you i believe are experts on military ranks but i think that this is a this is the second the most senior rank you can yeah. get in the military I'm not sure what USMC is. I'm guessing United States something core, Marine Corps, Military Corps. I'm not Marine sure. Marine Corps, yeah, I think. Possibly. Pro- probably. Yeah. So we, we've established that he's a very, very senior chap. Yes. Yeah. He, he, senior enough to have had a, a portrait done of him in uniform anyway. Yeah. Um, and then we see the aforementioned uh, general. He's shaving. It's an interesting one because we talked a couple of episodes ago about a technique that the the director, at that point it was Steven Spielberg in Murder by the Book, he did a cut from a a portrait of Mrs. Melville um, to a different character and he did it, he kind of faded through from one to the other. This is similar but different insofar as it closes in on the portrait and then it cuts to the same guy. So it's not quite the same technique, but it's interesting. It's the same sort of idea. Yeah. It's just being implemented in a slightly different way. I thought it was quite interesting. And we see we see the cut. We see him standing there uh, shaving in his bathrobe. Yes. Okay. We are then shown the exterior of the house, and a car approaches. Uh, another military person uh, gets out of the car, arrives at the door, and, and and knocks on the door. He is obviously fairly senior, but nowhere near as senior as as General Hollister. That's right. I think he's referred to as a colonel. A colonel. And again, our knowledge isn't great, but I believe that's perhaps three or four ranks 
below the, the general. But it's still a promoted rank. It's not a well, someone level. with. I'd imagine someone with yeah. a seniority with power, uh, but who would be certainly be subservient to a a general. Sure. So the door is opened by Hollister in his bathrobe. He seems surprised to see uh, who we learned to be Colonel Dutton. Uh, Dutton is very agitated, seems nervous, and in fact, he says that he apologises for not phoning and coming across, you know, un... Yeah, he's concerned about a wire tap. A wire tap, yeah. And to be honest, uh, Hollister looks quite bemused and I think he accuses him of being paranoid. Yes, but at this point Hollister hasn't quite understood what's going on. I think Dutton's got some information for him. He has. Effectively, what we find out here is that um, Hollister has, since, since his retirement, has a construction company. Yes. And because of his links and his history in the, in the military, he has a relationship and he has been awarded government contracts at a, a knockdown price. So effectively, there has been some sort of corruption where uh, Dutton has been provi- uh, has been signing off contracts, giving contracts to Hollister's construction company uh, when he probably wasn't the uh, the cheapest or most appropriate uh, vendor to be to be awarded the. the, the, the there work. seems to be some kind of skullduggery going on. Certainly, the two men both know what has happened, and they both seem concerned to differing degrees. Well, they're concerned. I would suggest that Dutton is more than concerned. He is obviously frightened well, and scared. He's, and, he's prepared to give up his entire life, go AWOL and disappear yeah. abroad. So he is. Seriously concerned. Yeah, I mean, that, I think again, the, the reaction of Hollister, uh, of General Hollister, is typical of the Columbo uh, killer. So, he, what he does, um, he tells Dutton not to panic, and he believes that because of the the rank uh, that he is, his history, his obvious um, authority, that he can ride this out. He'll deny it. No one will be able to. He's untouchable. Dutton, on the other hand, is worried, and he tells Hollister that he's about to to uh, go on the run. He's off to Geneva, Geneva, I think. And he actually recommends that Hollister does that. But there's no way a, a guy like... What, what is it he says? A forced... Uh, he says that he doesn't believe in a forced retreat. No. Someone with his pedigree and his history cannot be seen to be running away. He would rather stand and fight. Um, again, more about his ego uh, than, than anything else, I would suggest. Yeah, it, it's early days in this episode, so we don't know these characters yet, but we're getting a clearer picture from their interaction, that they are in very different positions. Yeah. Um, Hollister then, I suppose, realises... Well, firstly, there's no... um, He he is quite happy to throw Dutton to the the lines or to the wolves because what he says is that... um, He says, I only only put the bid in for the work. You're You're the guy that signed it off. You you give me the contract, so effectively, <laughs> that's your uh, you know you've, it's your problem. Yeah, I won't I won't be running away. I think he he realizes fairly quickly that there is a potential threat to him. He does because he we see him working out in his head the possible implications, and he asks Dutton what would happen if the military caught up with him on the run, and Dutton immediately uh, and, and insists that he would not give up. Hollister, he would keep his mouth shut, and there's nothing to fear. But Hollister realizes that you know he he doesn't want to be living the rest of his life waiting for that, that chap at the door, or that telephone call to, right. to come through. And I think this is quite an interesting scene because I think you get an insight into the character a bit here. He controls the conversation. He is dictating what they're talking about, what pace they're going at. He's giving himself time to think it through, to process the information, and to reach a decision about how to act. He he's thinking on his feet. He's been given this information. Uh, he's in his bathrobe, and all of a sudden, I suppose to an extent, his world is is is, is thrown into chaos. Yeah, he wasn't expecting this. No, but he, although uh, he does say he thought it might have to happen eventually. Eventually, yeah. But he was given no, a little warning here. Um, you know, the the, the, the gut, well, did, we, did we actually explain what happened? There's a, there's a contract, but uh, Dutton informs. Hollister that the uh, powers that be are auditing Yeah, there's clearly going to be sanctions imposed once this gets found out. So they're looking through the paperwork and eventually it will will all come out. So Dutton knows that the game is up, as they say. Um, 
I think also you mentioned earlier on today to, to me about this that um, you'd suggested that Dutton could have saved his own life just by well he was going on the, on the run anyway so why not just disappear and not even bother telling Hollis yes that was when I watched the episode and yeah we had a chat about this earlier today I thought there's no benefit to Dutton in coming to speak to Hollister his own path isn't going to change there's nothing Hollister can do to help Dutton so why is he even there? In my response, I think my my answer would be that there is still this uh, chain of command. He's still uh, a military person. He would not, for example, immediately suspect that Hollister would be a threat to him, certainly a threat to his life. And he still uh, believes that he has to go through the proper chain of command. So I think, you know, he was... The problem is that uh, his mindset is very much of obey the, speak to your superiors and, and, and everything goes through you know, the the senior officer. Yeah, that's right. And and Hollister asks him what he would do if he was caught and he says he would protect Hollister. I don't think his answer to that question really matters. I think by that stage or at that point, Hollister's reached the conclusion about what he's going to do. Yeah, and he says effectively, uh, you're, go- you're causing me a problem here and I, I can't let this happen. He's standing up at the the window facing the, 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 the marina, the, the, the water. Yeah. And he goes into... A crate. We don't see what he picks up, but we understand it to be a, a weapon, and we, he shoots and obviously kills. Well, we don't see this. We don't see it. Uh, again, similar to both prior uh, killings and the previous two episodes, there is um, there's no noise, there's no silent scream, but there's no yeah. We don't see the, the crime itself. However, we do see in this case the horror and the reaction. Realization. Realization. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which which is nice. Well, not for Dutton. Not for Dutton. Certainly, certainly not yeah. for Dutton, but for us. Yeah. Um, again, it shows that you can convey what's going on without having to get too graphic. Not that I've got anything against being graphic, but I think um, Columbo does it nicely. Yeah, I think it's handled pretty well and it, it keeps the show, you know, PG-13 or whatever the American ratings yeah. are these days. We next quickly uh, go to... The females, the the, the, the... the women that we saw at the start of the show yes. on their boat out in the marina. And the younger women, who we understand or we find out to be a um, Helen Stewart yep. and her mother, a Mrs Waters. Yes. Helen, the younger female, tells her mother what she has saw. And what she saw was Hollister shoot Dutton. Yes. Now, this is the first indication of the relationship and the, the psyche and personality of uh, the witness. Yep. Immediately, her mother uh, tells her to stop, basically stop being silly. You know. Yeah, so it's the first indication we really get of the the relationship, I think, between the mother and the daughter, because I found it a bit strange the well, way that she handled yeah, this. The, yeah. the mother, instead of saying, oh my goodness, what what's happened, what's going on, she's like, it's Dis- ridiculous. Dismissive, unsupportive. I'm not interested in what you have it, to it's say. Not even a, it's not even the relationship between the mother and the daughter, it's the the personality of of the um, of, of of Helen, who's obviously we find out has got no self esteem, lacks a lot of confidence, um, and is yeah, you know, isn't I, I don't. But understand. even lacking confidence, the fact that the mother's instant reaction is this can't have happened. She's either making it up or seeing things. Mm-hmm. It's it's an odd one unless she's been doing that generally. Oh, yeah. Even in this case, there's three, I think there are around three or four scenes where even although she is being told that um, she is, she's, you know, she shouldn't, even although that she's been told that uh, she can't be believed or it didn't happen and someone's put, putting her down, she does stick to her guns. So she says, no, I'm, take me straight, we're going straight back ashore. I'm, yes. going, I'm going to make a call to the police. So she, she seems to waver between self-belief and no confidence. Yes, and she's constantly challenged, and we'll come to this later yeah. in the episode. It's not like she's supported in any way. It's more a case of she has no confidence. They're going to keep beating her until she bounces back and stands up for herself. Yeah. And then when she does, they're going to be annoyed at that as well. It's, it's kind of strange. So she they, they go ashore, and there's a little uh, comedic moment or scene when um, Harry Barnes is... Helping the mother off the boat. Yes, um, Mrs. Stewart, the the daughter, has exited stage left um, quickly, and her mother, Mrs. Walters, is in the boat. 
Harry, who I believe let the boat to them. Yeah, he's the marina he's, owner he's or asking manager. asking for her assistance to get the boat tied up, but she thinks he's maybe coming on to her a little bit. And there's a bit of a... There's something about the yeah. pass me your rope and I'll... I'll uh, I don't know what that is. Something about your stern. I'll bound down your stern or I'll tie up your stern. And uh, Yes, and you can understand um, what they're going for there. And I think it's, it's a nice little moment. It is. Um, so we then have... What I should say at this point is that uh, the actor who plays Harry, the marine owner, uh, is a semi-recurring character in Colombo. Okay. In total of four uh, occasions, he makes an appearance. Um, also, um, the cafe owner, who we will come to later in, in this episode, also makes a number of appearances. But I think right. what we shall do is we shall... Refrain from chatting about them until. Well, there aren't any spoilers. I've not seen no. these other episodes yet. So, but just to yeah, make people aware, we are aware of uh, the the actor Val Avery and also Timothy Carey, who plays uh, Bert the cafe owner. Okay, but we'll come back to them uh, in, a, in another episode. I think. Yeah, we're not forgetting about them. We're not forgetting about them. So we're we're back uh, on shore at the jetty. Yes. Uh, and uh, Helen is contemplating. She's a bit unsure. She's sitting beside a, a phone box. She's got a coin in her hand. And she's contemplating phoning the police to, to make this uh, assertion. Yeah, I think she's it's clearly a bit distressed about what she's seen. Mm-hmm. She's not certain whether to call in or not. It's not clear why she's not certain whether to call in. Possibly because of her mother's reaction. Mm-hmm. And then um, her mother, of course, extricates herself from the boat and, and shows up. She does. And again, she pushes her. or she she I think she says, so you've came to your senses. And you're, you know, the police must get lots of crank calls every day. Uh, so don't be so stupid, effectively, is what she's saying. But again, this, there's this put down. There's obviously this lack of self-confidence. But as soon as she is pushed, she yep, immediately she picks up the, she reacts, she picks up the phone and she places the call to the to the, the cops telling them what she yeah. saw. But she's, it's, she's an interesting character, I think. Yeah. And I did wonder at that point whether the mother was maybe thinking, well, we're not the sort of family who gets involved in this sort of thing. If that's maybe her approach. It's not so much as you're an idiot as... Look, it can't possibly have been. That's not our our way. We don't deal with this sort of thing. Let's just forget it ever happened and move away. Yeah, um, the, the the cops arrive, the local patrolman in, in their uniform, and she explains what she saw. Yeah. Um, the mother again is still even in front of the cops is yeah skeptical skeptical. So it's, you know we're already starting to the, her credibility is taking a bit of a hit immediately. She's getting undermined. She's she been undermined. Um, we find the the cops. Uh, ask or the, the the policeman asks her uh, if she knows whose house that is, almost as if well she should know who it is. So we again understand that Hollister is known in the area. Yeah. He's a you know he's obviously some a, a big shot, um, and he's actually quite surprised that Helen doesn't know uh, who who he is. Yeah, he expected her to be aware of that. Yeah. Uh, this is you know supported. By the fact that the cop will not go and knock on the door himself, he calls the report into. Yeah, he wants homicide to come and deal with it. He wants someone else to deal with it, someone more superior. He doesn't find that he doesn't believe that someone of his rank can be knocking on the door of General. Yeah, no, he's, he's pretty explicit about that. Yeah. Yes, I think he's a bit embarrassed. Um, so this is where we're introduced to the, our favourite lieutenant. Uh, it's late, yep. Later on in the evening. The young cop uh, is stationed outside, obviously keeping an eye on things, waiting for the, his superior officer yep. to arrive. He's clearly not, clearly not worked with Colombo before. Nope. Uh, well, he wouldn't. You know, he's not a homicide. He's not of that level. He'll be dealing with the day to day. Yeah. So shenanigans. Colombo shows up and parks in his space, and the young cop. He's not happy about that because he thinks that space is for a policeman. It's not a marked car that's come. It's not a guy in uniform. But Colombo clears it up fairly quickly. Once he's had a bit of a dig. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the the young cop obviously doesn't believe that uh, Columbo looks like what a lieutenant detective should look like. And This is the first of a few times in this episode where they, I think it's around they th- get onto yeah, a, a few. Th- I think about three times they have a go. Now, I wonder though whether that's for this story or whether this is the, the show setting up this concept of Columbo as a scruffy cop. I think you might be right in the latter there. Yeah. I think that... They are trying to yeah, solidify his character. It's, it's like big capital letters. In case you did not notice, yeah. Colombo dresses scruffily. Yeah, and I think they may have overdone it slightly in this episode. Just overdone the pudding, perhaps. Yeah, 
Uh, but it's nice nonetheless. Um, so Colombo arrives. Like in every scene where, where that happens, he always takes it uh, in, in good sort of grace and has a smile. Yeah. He's obviously used to the, the remarks. And uh, as we know, or as I know and you will probably have guessed, he uses that uh, disarming feature to his, his benefit, whether it's with... You know, colleagues, whether it's with witnesses, we've or, seen that already in the, the two yeah. earlier episodes. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's something he has in his armory. At he all. does. We then have Colombo knocking on the door. No, before that, he gives an instruction to the young cop, and it's quite an important one. You're right. What does he do? He tells him to go and search the yacht, which is parked or moored or whatever you do to a yacht round the, the back of the house. Well, it's not a yacht; it's a boat. A, yacht, a yacht's got a sail. Oh, a I'm boat. not. I'm not a boat person. Obviously, neither am I. So he goes to check the ship that's round the back of the house. <laughs> the, okay, it's a, we'll call it a boat from now on. Okay. Like, and the young policeman is not happy about that because he knows the rules. He knows you need a warrant to do that. Mm-hmm. And and Colombo handles it fairly smoothly. He does. Says he'll ask for permission. Don't worry about it. He's yeah. in control. He does. And I think again, this shows that Colombo is happy to bend the rules when required. Yeah. He's happy to use his authority when needs must. He's, he's, it's also interesting, I think it tells you a little bit more about how times have changed because nowadays they wouldn't dare to do that kind of search without a warrant because any evidence they found would be inadmissible. You know, it would be uh, fruit of the poison tree, I believe is the, the phrase that they would use. Mm-hmm. So it just it would be self-defeating, whereas perhaps then, had they found a body on the boat, that would be okay. Yep. He, so we arrive at, uh, well, Colombo arrives at the door of, of General Hollister. Uh, Hollister answers it. Yeah, he's wearing a, a tuxedo, and Colombo, I think, is quite embarrassed. I think Colombo's aware of who Hollister is. Yes, he perhaps feels. Well, I hesitate to say intimidated, but there's a certain respect, deference, yeah, deference and respect there. I think he explains that there has been a reported shooting uh, from within his home. Yeah, uh, Hollister asks who reported this. And Colombo rightly says, "No, I can't tell you that." Yeah. Uh, but Hollister says, "Come on, anyway. You've only got your, you know. I understand you have a job to do." And invites him to, you know, have a look around. Uh, a nice, a funny scene we have is that the, the crates that we, the, the crate, the coffin-sized crate that we mentioned earlier, which yeah, is it, uh, being used to pack away memorabilia. It's like a big elephant sitting there at the side of the room. <laughs> You meant to be dealt with. There are two cadets nailing this shut, so it's partially nailed shut already. Yeah. And you can see Colombo, he's eyeing this. He is agitated. He's de- he can't. He knows he cannot leave this scene with a coffin-sized crate without checking it. Yeah, that would be a tough one to explain. Away. But he's slightly embarrassed, and he eventually has to say to Hol- "Listen, you know, can can I have a look?" And Hollister uh, has. I think Hollister takes it in good. Uh, good humour. Yeah, he says a bit obvious. A bit obvious, but listen, let's let's do this. So they reopen it. Uh, it's again full of guns and uh, uniforms. Colombo sticks his um, his face into it, holding a cigar, which no doubt drops cigar ash all over the place. Uh, makes a bit of a mess of these finely uh, folded military uh, garments. Um, <laughs> again, this is. Looking back, uh, or looking at it from 2014, there has been a, a shooting reported in the house. Yeah. There is a crate full of uh, weapons. Yes. These days, this place would be on lockdown. They would say, everyone out, we're not touching this until we get experts in here. Yeah. Colombo is quite happy to look in the... In, in the um, I mean, Hollister does say that there have been... The firing pin has been removed, but... Yeah. You, you mean... You wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. He, Columbo says, yeah, that's fine. That's, there's nothing nothing to see here. Yeah, I don't think Columbo's convinced at this point that there has been a shooting. No. No, he isn't. Um, he, again, they, they wander around the, the home, they have a look. Columbo asks for a, a match. Yeah, I was. my note that I took at that point was that this is becoming, at this stage, three episodes in, more of a catchphrase than anything else. Uh, when Columbo says, got a match. Yep. I think he said it in every episode. He certainly said it in the construction yard in episode two. I believe he said it at some point in episode one as well. Mm-hmm. So every episode now he's, he's asked somebody for a match. And I wonder if that's something they, they thought might catch on or whether that's just such an average phrase that it wouldn't have been noticed at the time. Yeah, who knows. But what that does lead us to is a fairly significant 
Uh, clue. Yes, as it proves later on, and yeah. it doesn't occur to Colombo at the, in the moment. No. Nope. And again, we talked about this a few minutes ago. I wasn't happy last week with Colombo taking little things and then solving the case in an unrealistic way. But nope. this, in this case, he gets the clue and it doesn't register straight away. It's something he has to come back to later on, which is a much more natural, I believe, uh, approach. Yeah, I mean, I think they may have taken they may have taken on board some feedback from that previous episode and thought, hmm, that was a bit, a bit too flimsy. Let's and they went slightly further in the opposite direction because, uh, yeah, he doesn't jump to any conclusions. Yeah, at all. this is the thing because he gets sold a, a cock and bull story like he was by Ken Franklin, and whereas he had. No real reason to suspect to suspect Franklin, but sense something was wrong. Yeah, he doesn't pick up on it here, and whether that's to do with Hollister's rank, whether it's to do with the fact that he doesn't have a body, he's not even sure there's been a shooting, or whether it's just a quirk of this particular story, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, you mean uh, sorry, you mean Robert Culp, not Ken Franklin? No, both of them. Oh, okay. Um, Ken Franklin in the first episode. Yeah. Uh, comes to the house when he's been cooking the omelette and he's, he does but I mean goes into uh, spiel. yeah but what I mean is that in the second episode there was absolutely no there's that one as well there was yeah. both episodes there was Columbo in the second episode as we discussed sort of had solved worked out and solved the crime immediately without any yeah. real evidence of what yeah. was going on so yeah so yeah and this is the this is the opposite like yeah. you were just saying he, okay. he's got a fairly shaky story coming at him and he's buying it mm-hmm. and that seemed to me it didn't really fit with what had come before but perhaps it's just them trying to evolve the character and trying to work out yeah. the character as well. Maybe they don't quite have the right feel for him. So Colombo picks up a... He's asked, asked for a match and he's given a, an ornate lighter. Oh, that's a huge thing. A huge lighter. Um, and he asks why that's not been given to... It's not been packed up with the rest of the memorabilia. Yes. Yeah, that's the key point here. Yeah, and Hollister tells him it's a lot of sentimental value and he can't part with it. Yeah, showing he's a sentimental kind of guy. He, he does. Um... What happens next? Well, at that point, Colombo gives a bit more detail on what the allegation was, what he had been told had happened. He'd seen a person in uniform, and Hollister explained that he had tried on one of his uniforms, he was getting packed away, and perhaps that was what was seen. Mm -hmm. Colombo asks him, well, they look around, I'm not sure what order, I can't remember what order, he looks around casually, he doesn't do much of a search. No. I'm sure you told me something about the bookshelves. Is it this scene that there's an interesting... Uh, at the Well, in, in his... Uh, in both scenes, yeah. uh, a little bit of trivia, there are books, there are novels by Mrs Melville, uh, <laughs> which obviously was the fictional author of Ken Franklin and Jim Ferriss's... Uh, yeah, in the first episode. In the first episode. Yeah. So a little nod to that there, which was nice. I think that's quite good. Well, while, whilst we're on this, I was going to leave it until the end of this scene, but um, it's worth mentioning just now. One of the biggest pieces of Columbo, uh, Columbo trivia uh, happens uh, in this particular scene at the beginning. Right. When the door is answered by Hollister, yep. Columbo flashes his ID. And this is a, a big moment. Dun, dun, dun. It's the only time we are able to have a look and have a glimpse at Columbo's first name, which happens to be Frank. Right. So obviously the props department have created this uh, this ID. They've written a name and uh, Frank's his name. Never mentioned again. We never find it anymore. But in this particular uh, episode, we do have a glimpse and it looks to be that Frank is Columbo's first name. There you go. Do you know uh, any other... Informa- uh, have you heard uh, any other trivia about Columbo's first name? No. I'm sure I remember as a child playing Trivial Pursuit. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, okay, so Trivial Pursuits, what happens is that uh, each edition has a number of fake answers to questions in order to, to try and catch out any other people who may be using their answers in their own uh, games or books. I often suspected that when I would get things wrong yeah. in Trivial Pursuits. I think in that case it's probably more likely that you were getting them wrong mm. some of the time. No, I'm not convinced. Okay, so what happened was that Trivial Pursuit asked the question, uh, what was Columbo's first name? And they gave the answer as Philip uh, to try and snare any dodgy characters. So if another quiz had been published with the question... What is Columbo's first name? And the answer, Philip. Trivial Pursuit would have been able to say, ah, gotcha. That's it, exactly. 
Just a little bit of uh, Trivial Pursuit trivia. They could have framed it in their brief and at the end said, just one more thing. <laughs> they could have. <laughs> um, so, during this scene, to get back on track... Um, yes, Hollister has been talking about his uniform and Columbo's got a great line because he gets shown a uniform that's covered with medals and Columbo's line is, that's a lot of fruit salad. He does. I think, to be honest, I don't, that's not an original line. Right. That's. Uh, I think that's a term. Fruit salad, I think, is a term. It's not one I'd heard. Okay. Yeah, it's nice, but I, I do. I think I have heard it before. I think it is a, uh, yeah, a term for, you know, all those uh, medals and awards that they have pinned to their. I like it. To their chest. Yeah, it's a nice line. Um, so, towards the end, oh, yeah, okay. Columbo asks Hollister if he owns um, a gun, a he handgun, does. a mm-hmm. pistol. And Hollister thinks about it, he stumbles for a second and says no at first and then corrects himself and says, yeah, he does, it's a, a target pistol. It doesn't, it's such a, you know, an unpowerful gun that he doesn't even consider it to be a weapon. But yep. he takes it out, he shows Columbo, he shows them, it's in a case with a, a medal for target shooting. Yes. Um, and Columbo inspects it. But again, a bit odd, he, he smells the gun. So these days it would be straight to bi- to ballistics and straight for all sorts yeah. of analysis. In this case, Columbo gives it a little sniff and uh, says, "Yeah, that's okay." Yeah, that's and Hollister comes up with this scenario in his head that he's going to present now. And it, again, this brings back to previous episodes. He's he's creating a narrative for what might have happened to explain his actions. Yeah, um, and he says he maybe he was holding the gun and he stumbled. And maybe that's what the woman saw. Yeah, well, he said that it was at one point he was wearing his uniform, then he changed into his bathrobe. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, it's it's curious that Columbo's not more suspicious. Yeah, because it does sound like nonsense to me, to be honest. Yeah. Hey ho, I think at this point there's still. It could just be that Columbo's gone in there with his mind made up. There is no murder. So, whatever, you know, it's confirmation bias. He hears something that's plausible and he just goes with it. Yeah. Um, we. Again, as Columbo is leaving, uh, Hollister tries to find out more about the person who uh, who made the accusation. Yes, and Columbo goes through the, the regulations with him. He, says he can't do it. He tries to be a little bit sneaky. You know, he says, obviously, it was a he. He says, no, I'm not saying it was a he, and he assumes it was a she. Yeah. Um, but he, yeah, so if Columbo tells him nothing, but I think he, uh, he finds it a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, just by... Yeah, assuming. I think even given what we've heard, Columbo remains sceptical of the suggestion that there might have been a shooting, even as he's ready to leave. Yep, and there is almost a... Uh, Columbo leaves, and he does a sort of one more thing. Yeah, he talks about the, the search that he'd arranged for the yacht. He does. He uh, explains that he had someone look at... You know, have a uh, yeah, have a little search, have a little look around his not his yacht, his boat. Sorry. And he uh, said that he didn't think that Hollister would mind. Hollister says that he always preaches to be uh, use intuition. No, not intuition. What am I talking about? Initiative. Initiative. And and Hollister knows that there's nothing on his ship anyway, so he yeah. doesn't need to worry about it. So he's it happy too much. enough, and and uh, Columbo Columbo leaves. Yep, and uh, he leaves to get a report from his colleague who's been searching the boat. Yep, and his colleague, the young cop says found nothing nothing on the boat engines are cold so yeah. that's that so at this point i think colombo actually believes there's nothing to yeah he, he asks here. if the woman could have been drinking he's skeptical very yep. skeptical and, and, and it's such a marked contrast to the earlier episodes it is we then go to the marina again and hollister speaks to harry the marina owner or yes, ma- manager guy, he was flirting with um the lady earlier on yeah and he manages to find out the names and address of the the two ladies who were on the on the boat. Yes. Highly, again, dubious behaviour. Well, this is a strange one because at this point, Hollister's not suspected. Columbo doesn't believe there's been a crime. He doesn't believe the allegation. But Hollister's going proactively to the witness to find out who the witness is to speak to the witness. And I think this is the same thing that we saw with Ken Franklin in episode 1 and we saw it again with Inspector Brimmer in episode 2, the killer wants to control what's going on yeah. in his own way. They've all got their own different idiosyncrasies idiosyncrasies and <laughs> they go about things slightly differently but it's the same overarching theme, they want to be in control, they want to 
drive the narrative that suits their position or getting away with their crimes. Maybe worth having a quick, brief chat about Eddie Albert, who plays uh, General Hollister. Yeah. Uh, we'll keep this brief. Um, again, big TV star, done a lot of uh, work in, in the States through the through the decades. Died in 2005, aged 99. It's a good run. Good run. Must have just missed the, the big 100. He will have been gutted. He will have been absolutely gutted. Um, interesting that he was a real-life World War II uh, hero. Apparently he rescued 70 injured marines. There you go. So he had a, a background of being a, a man, man in uniform. I wonder if there's a nod to that in the USMC thing that we talked about earlier on then. Possibly. If they put the character in that position to reflect it. Yeah, probably. Oscar nominated as well, I believe. Twice. 1973, well, the 1973 was when he was Oscar nominated. Right. Um, so the film, the, the movie was the previous year. Uh, that was for the Heartbreak Kid. So this was after... After this performance. This performance. And his first Oscar uh, nomination was for uh, Roman Holiday in 1953, both for su- Best Supporting okay. Actor. And like we saw with Ray Milland last week, these are high calibre actors that are being brought in on a brand new show. So it shows that the network is invested in this. They want this to be a success. It's not a wait and see sort of thing. Yes, yeah, so it's an a- interesting tact. Yep. Um, as I said, you know, we didn't get a massive amount of exposure to... Eddie Albert in the UK. No, when I was when we were growing up, the one thing that I do I did know him for, and I'd actually watched this movie before I saw this episode of Columbo, was Escape uh, to Witch Mountain. Okay, I think it was a Disney film. Two kids with strange uh, psychic abilities. Um, re- recently remade with The Rock. Okay, I've not saw that, but um, no. Okay, Eddie Albert's in that. So I looked. Uh, at the uh, IMD page, IMDb page for sure. that. Not looked at it for a, for a while. And there's some fantastic connections we have to Columbo. Okay. So, it starred Eddie Albert, who obviously was a... Hollister in this episode. Hollister. He also stars, uh, or also starred uh, Mr. Ray Milland. From last week, you'll remember him. And also starring Donald Pleasance. Who I don't you, know who that is. You, you know who Donald Pleasance is, the actor. In a Colombo context, I'm not sure. I don't have any character or anything. No, we haven't. We haven't uh, came across him okay. as yet. Uh, but he is a, a character on a fantastic one of my favourite episodes of okay. Colombo. That's enough. We'll, Let's we'll stop talking to. about this. Yeah. Also, um, the movie was written by a Scottish writer, uh, a chap called Robert Young. Okay. Who then went on to write uh, the Bye Bye Sky High IQ Murder, another Colombo episode, which we've not got to yet. Okay. So, interesting. Uh, it's quite interesting that they all come together in that yeah. way. I wonder if there was any, any sort of pivotal connection there. Some person who... Could be a network thing. Could or... be a network thing, but yeah, interesting. Um, so, we then arrive at... To, to get back to the uh, the episode... Columbo at a pool party. Yeah, he walks through a 70s <laughs> pool party uh, at night time. They're having a little dance, some nice 70s music. Yeah. Uh, and he approaches the apartment or house of, uh, of Helen... Um, Mrs. Walters, the mother. Yep. Uh, she's the. In fact, she doesn't. She doesn't answer the door. Helen answers the door whilst uh, mixing a a drink. Yes, they're fully relaxing. Relaxing again. Nothing the matter with that. But it doesn't doesn't you know? It's not fantastic um, in terms of her credibility when he's already asked if she could have been drinking when he yeah. uh, when she turns up with a drink in hand so again the suspicion may be that she likes a drink she's not a serious person not a serious person um, so he shows up and uh, explains who he is and he's not initially believed no the mother Mrs uh, Walters runs over and insists that uh, he produce I- ID because he doesn't yeah. look like a yeah this is the second time in this yeah. episode we get this it's the whole Columbo dresses scruffily she doesn't I, look like a standard. Yeah. She cop. looks. She looks him up and down, and uh, reluctantly accepts his uh, his ident- identification. Yep. Uh, what happens next? Well, she keeps on carping in the background while he tries to talk to her daughter. She goes through the story from her point of view of what she saw. He asks, "Had she been drinking?" And he does say, "I hope you don't get offended at this, but knowing surely that it was going to offend her, and it does." Yeah. She uh, has some pottery on the go, not very she does. good. Well, I wasn't sure. Is it not good or is it really stylized? But I, I suspect maybe it's just not good. I don't think it's good. 
Yeah. Uh, but again, I think it's trying to show that she's perhaps doesn't know where she's. There's not a lot of direction. Yeah. In, her, in her life generally. So I guess a, she's done a bit of a big read into that. Really. Well, she talks about therapy. She does. I think that there's an underlying theme of her getting divorced and coming to terms with why and what that means and what we'll the find out later position on that she's left her, in hus- her husband had cheated on her yep. uh, she, but her mother thought she should have just put up with that yeah, exactly and and she, I don't she, know if that's a thing of the times again mm. or maybe of her mother's times rather than all of the 70s yeah. so, uh, I mean yeah, I, might, I might be reading too much into it but I just think that uh, she's someone with a lot of focus a lot of self confidence she's trying different things she's not particularly great at pottery I don't think nice person but yeah she's well, she's maybe but, had a role as a housewife, and she's now trying to find a new role, having mm-hmm. been taken out of that, perhaps against her will to a certain extent. Um, and she's trying to redefine who she is, and she's not yeah. maybe figured it out just yet. Colombo asks her, uh, well, Colombo explains uh, Hollister's, or provides Hollister's explanation he of does. what happened, and Colombo asks Helen if she thinks it's a reasonable explanation. Yes. And she says yes. But she's adamant it's not what she saw. Yeah, she's quite clear on what she saw here. So again, this is the flip side of what we're saying. She is lacks self confidence, but when pushed a little bit, she sticks to her guns. Yeah, but she's nice. Well, it's it's not just nice. It's I think it's strong show of character. It's yeah. not she's not malleable at this point of the episode. Not at this point. Uh, she asks Columbo outright, "Do you believe me?" And we don't get an answer. It's interesting that she asks, though she's looking for that reassurance mm-hmm. at this point. You know, tell me I'm not crazy, that sort of thing. Colombo doesn't a- doesn't answer. And he the, kind of skirts around the question. He doesn't, doesn't he? and then we move to another scene. Yeah. We see uh, Hollister get in a car uh, and leave. And yeah. then, <laughs> well, I didn't pick up at this at first. You think this was Dutton's car? I think so. Yeah. He puts on gloves when he gets in the car. Yeah, and I think they, this is. We can go back to the point I made right at the start about the music because we get. Heavy-handed, ominous music. Yeah. This is evil doing, something bad is going on here. Yeah. Um, which is a big departure from the way the music was used in the first two episodes, where it's much more of a subtle mm-hmm. approach. Yeah. Um, no, I think it was definitely uh, Dustin's car he was, uh, he, was, he was getting rid of. Yeah. He drives to, and again, this is where he he, he drives and arrives. This is um, General Hollister. Yeah. He arrives at the door of the witness, Helen. Yes. Whoa. What is he doing? I don't know. This is really, again, unacceptable behaviour. Not even in the sense that it would be illegal, uh, but just crazy. If you are trying to... You're not under a massive suspicion at the moment. Colombo seems perfectly happy to let it go. Had he not started doing anything and interacting, this may have blown over. Well, until the body showed up, but yeah. Yeah. But he's putting himself in a position here. So he, what he does is he shows up at Helen's house and he suggests that she watch the the, new, the 11 o'clock news that night. Yeah. Uh, and he thinks that it may show him uh, to have been miscast, as, in his words, miscast as a, a murderer. Yes. Which is odd because, as we find out, the 11 o'clock news shows him to be a highly competent military chap who has no doubt killed... Well, he talks about his famous gun. Yeah. He has no doubt killed a number of people. A famous user of guns. I couldn't have shot someone. Yeah, a famous user of guns. So if all the people do miscast, I would think, no, you're you're to an extent a professional killer. If all the people who may have been... It may have been possible, I would suggest it was you. You've accessed two guns and you've probably killed lots of people before. But I don't think that's how he sees himself. He sees himself as an honourable man and oh. he thinks yeah, the people course. respect him and he thinks that's what she will get from the news and to a certain extent it is what she gets yeah. from the news. I think we're just probably see, we're, we're thinking of how, you know, in 2014 that, that sort of same reverence and respect for uh, different military escapades uh, is not there across, across the board yeah. anymore. It's quite interesting this episode is coming out in the middle of the Vietnam War as well when... Mm-hmm. There was a controversial sort of public debate going yeah. on well, about yeah, I mean, the I, ethics of certain. Yeah, war. I think up until that point, uh, it would have been a fairly black and white issue. Yeah, Obviously, certainly World War Two had been fairly clear cut in yeah. terms of who what side it? you're going to be on. Yeah. Um, you had the Korean War. A lot of Americans were involved in that mm-hmm. in the the fifty, maybe late forties, early fifties. Fifty, yeah. And that in the story is the war where Hollister's received an injury and had to retire. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then Vietnam came after that, around about the time of this. Yeah. Um, we then go back to uh, the, the, the Dutton's car, and we see Hollister leave it, abandon it on the on the street. Obviously, just nowhere near his house. Nowhere near his house. Yeah. So we go to the cafe, or a cafe. Yeah, we get kind of. It's almost like a double show here. You've got Columbo in the cafe watching the news. You've got Mrs. Stewart and Mrs. Walters at home watching the news. Yep. And you've got Bert in the cafe, the cafe owner, watching yes. the news with Columbo. Yes, with he, some yeah. degree of reverence for Hollister. Oh yeah, he's old school, so he's watching this guy and he thinks he's a fantastic, a lot of awe, admiration. Yeah. Obviously, this guy can do no wrong. He's a war hero, somebody, someone to be admired, and someone yeah who he has a lot of yeah, respect. Yeah, and this and is clearly for. the the impact that Hollister was expecting the future to have. Yeah, and to an extent, he's, he he is correct. I mean, Columbo and Mrs. Stewart do have Columbo himself. I think has got that. Immediate. What I think happens is that with that position, you the default position is to have respect and awe until yeah. proven otherwise. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like I say, Bert is a cafe owner. We'll get to him in another episode. We'll discuss more um, about the the actor Timothy Timothy Carey. He's an interesting guy. Um. But the 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 news item twice mentions this famous pistol, this pearl handled. A gun, handgun, yeah. that was owned by Hollister. Oh, it was Hollister's gun, yeah. Hollister's gun, yeah. And this is the moment, I think, where we start to see Columbo go from full-blown scepticism to maybe just thinking about things a bit more. I think it's the first suspicion. Yeah. yeah. Um, we And we see, you know, that, as you say, it's flicking between the cafe and Helen's home. Her mother suggests that after watching this news program, that Helen has certainly must must have changed must change her mind because the guy's a, a war hero. Yeah, yeah. Um, we then see later on in the evening or early morning, Hollister returning from the ceremony. Yeah, he changed. Well, before that, we've got another story. You have skipped over another good Columbo line. Okay. Uh, when he leaves the cafe, he tells Bert that he's going fishing. Ah, yeah. Uh, and that in both the met- metaphorical and literal sense. Yes. He he yes he's going fishing because I think at that point he realizes there might be some something worth catching. Yes. Yep. And yeah, we'll we'll get to the uh, in just a moment. Uh, just yeah. a moment. The scene we're talking about. So Hollister returns home. He changes his clothes. Has a quick drink. <laughs> this is the only scene which, whilst I enjoy it, uh, is faintly ridiculous. He presses a button, and we have a a hidden <laughs> swivel. Uh, cupboard, do, 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 yeah, do, like a do, James do, Bond do. body, yeah, which conceals or reveals when he presses the button the trussed up cellophane body of Colonel yeah, Dutton. Yeah, it's quite a gruesome sort of thing, given that they've concealed the murders in every yeah, episode. It's actually quite, when you look at it, yeah, you can see his face, his dead body all tied up. And, yeah. But the thing that's ridiculous, I think, is why would he have such a, a, a chamber you know, built? I mean, what? Possible purpose. It's not a safe. If you if you get documents and things you need to store, you can fair enough. You know, have a secret compartment with with a safe in it. Maybe it's just a because vault. you can afford it and it's cool. Yeah, possibly. I just think that it's um, yeah. I didn't. Uh, it, it's it's almost. It's not even just James Bond body. It's kind of Batman style, isn't it? It's uh, like the bit when you go. Yes. And then you've got the uniform hanging. In. Oh, there's always or some sort of uh, Superman three. The, the comedy bit with uh, Richard Pryor and. Yeah, um, Robert Vaughn, mm-hmm. where he, there's a bar which keeps revolving. There's comedy films like that. So yeah. it was it was nice, but I think you know, uh, it was a bit weird. It was weird. Um, so what happens is we he's changing his boating gear yeah. and then he's taking his body out onto his boat early morning and he ditches the boat, goes out to sea, gets rid of the body, and he returns in breaking daylight. Yeah, just dawn. around about dawn as the other boats are leaving. And who's waiting for him on it's the Columbo dockside? With a other. fishing rod. He is, wearing his uh, normal jacket and his raincoat, a little fishing pole into the water. Um, yep. and, we, and we get a family reference. His brother-in-law, George, a fisherman apparently, yeah. told him to uh, He's get He's got a family early. member for every occasion. He does have a family. We, we'll talk about that later on in yeah. uh, the final scene. But uh, yeah, it's another nod to a, a Columbo trope that, uh, that we, we come across often. <laughs> um I think this is, you know, Hollister asks him what he's doing. Yes. And Columbo says he's looking to catch something. And I think this is the first time where he hints that 
he is there's something here that he's on to and that he might be a suspect in something. Yeah. Um I think the pistol, yeah. The lack of this pistol is a This is they have a big conversation point. here about where is this pistol? Why was it not in the box? And um, what's happened to it? And Hollister comes up with a story. What is the story? The story is that when he was injured in the Korean War, when he suffered the, the grievous injuries that caused him to retire, he ended up losing it in hospital. It was stolen from him. Yeah. Um. Again. Yeah, um, it, it's a dubious story. We've just heard the previous night a news report which talked about how famous this gun was. You would think if it had been stolen, perhaps that might have come up. Well, I think certainly in today's... Um media landscape he would have put out a plea it'd be a major news story famous general loses his famous gun can anyone oh, yeah, identify it look out for it there's a reward for a safe return etc I mean, etc notwithstanding the fact that a famous general having a famous gun is faintly ridiculous in 2014 <laughs> um, yeah it's, it's the kind of thing the way it's set up in the story it wouldn't have passed without comment if yeah. it had happened the way he said it did. I think he'd be looking for it back. You know, it's something we know he's attached to these uh, these objects. Yeah. I think he would be looking to, in some way, off, as I say, offer yeah. a reward for it, safe, uh, safe return. Yeah, so his story is there's a replica being made for the exhibition. Okay. We then go to the place of work of Helen, the, a petting zoo. Yeah, we earlier saw her attempt at a clay llama yeah. made in her pottery. Um, barn. I don't even know if it counted as a barn. So a pottery area of yeah. her house. Um, and we see a real llama here. She works with llamas. She does. I think, again, this is another wall moment where the person that you've accused or you think is capable of murder turns up at your work. She asks how he knew where she worked and he said he's been to his her home and had a lengthy conversation with her yeah. mother. You think about this. I mean, That's creepy. You accuse this guy of murder one day and then he shows up at your front door, speaks to you, shows up at your front door again, speaks to your mother, shows up at your work and invites you to go out for a drink and your response is to go for a drink with your him? Your response should be to inform the police immediately and say, yes. can you have a word with this, this guy? Yeah. This is odd, odd behaviour. It's deeply, deeply concerning behaviour and also unnecessary. Why is he doing this? I, well, I suppose by this point he's got He's twigged that maybe Columbus onto him a little bit, and he yeah, but he hadn't twigged when he went to her door the first no, time. No, the first time it was oh. crazy. Okay. But again, I think it's part of this whole wanting to be in control. So he's got a loose cannon there. He doesn't yeah. know what she's going to do. He maybe feels like he needs more information. He wants to take control of the situation and be the one who is directing things. So he asks her to go for a drink instead of running a mile. She accepts. Yes, um, and we then go to a restaurant bar. Shades of. Lasanka. Lasanka, episode Lasanka. one, yeah. From episode one, where, yeah, she, as we can surmise, is, you know, is quite, you know, she's lonely perhaps, doesn't have a, a, a male in her life or a partner in her life, likes the attention. It seems that way. He's a cha- charming guy, he's a famous guy, he's a powerful yeah, man. Yeah, no, he's fairly smooth, smooth in this, smooth this scene. Yeah. Um, and Hoster suggests that the sun and the water may have caused some sort of. Yeah. Her to mis- misread the situation. Yeah, no, and maybe see what she thought she saw. Yeah, she and he asks if this is a possibility. She agrees it's possible. Yeah. So our defence is our defence well, is being You see in the here. course of even this short scene, she goes from being kind of uneasy to being fairly intrigued by this man. And it's almost a rapid fire progression, but she clearly is swinging away from her initial position. Well, I mean, it gets even more intense. They talk about their personal lives. And uh, the fact that she has no children, her she's divorced. She explains that he has been married to the military and his business has had no time yeah. for relationships. Yeah, it's, it's the age-old thing of showing an interest in her and then telling her what she wants to hear. But he then really turns up the charm and says that it was a you know, sort of love at first sight scenario. Because you know, she thinks that... Um, this, this can't be the case, but she he, he explains that he actually has feelings for her. Yeah. Very, very odd. Very odd. Oh, yeah. Um, so we then go back to Helen's home, where Columbo is talking to uh, Mrs. Walters, who is Helen's mother. Yes. And Helen returns. Looks, I think she returns from dinner at this point, not from these drinks. She's, yes, she's been, been out for dinner, for dinner and now she's had more home. drinks. She seems very happy. Yeah. Um, and she, she's quite happy to uh, to let her mother and Columbo know that. 
She was out with him, yeah. She was out with him. And Columbo's rightly shocked. And again, this is a real sort of second major... Okay, I think Columbo now knows there's something up here. This, this is not... Uh, there's something not right here. Yeah, but, it's taken him long enough, but at this point he's, he's getting... Yeah. Yeah, and now he starts to show concern for Mrs. Stewart. Yes, well, firstly, I mean, the mother, she's delighted. Mrs. Walters is absolutely delighted. She's oh, yeah. obviously okay. wants to see her daughter married off and settle down and get so, out, her, out her hair, perhaps. Um, yeah, if we think back, Columbo, in the Columbo universe, he has saw Miss Lysanka he did. from the first episode be murdered by the person who was charming her. So he must be fearful for yeah, her Yeah, there'll be alarm bells ringing. There should be. And he, he actually looks quite worried for her and shocked when he finds out that they've been seeing each yeah. other. And he raises his concerns, and she's quite upset at this, and she queries um, why he finds it so hard to believe that someone would genuinely be interested in her. Because she wants to believe yep. that this man is genuinely interested in her as an individual. Yeah. And Columbo's got a good line. He comes back. It's a sort of a non complimenty compliment. He says, you're a very individual person. Yes. Slightly backhanded. It's, it's very much a, a non compliment, isn't yeah. it? Um, so... Columbo actually tells her he's changed his mind and they found the car of Dutton. He's yep. disappeared. Yep. So now he is really suspicious. He thinks there's uh, some wrong doing some something's yeah. happened to that. And the, he's the, increasingly person. concerned because this is the first indication he gets that she's wavering in her story. Yep. And and he says to her, and the quote is, One dinner with General Hollister and you begin to doubt your senses. He's quite scathing. He's not happy here. Yes. Uh, like we said, like we've like spoke about before. When required, he isn't uh, shy or isn't, um, he's not unwilling He's not unwill- just nice to, all the time. Nice, yeah, yeah, he, he, will be, hard. he will be firm but fairly be harsh if it's required. Um, he asks her, to, he shows her a picture of Colonel Dutton and she can't identify it. But to be fair, she wouldn't have been able, I wouldn't have imagined she could identify him from, from that distance anyway. Um, we then go to the, the boat, uh, Hollister's boat again. And... We see Helen lying asleep on the yeah, top. Yeah, clearly Columbo's warnings have had no impact. No, she's obviously comfortable enough to fall asleep and relax with someone who she has previously accused of shooting someone. Um, yeah. And she w- Hollister wakes her up t- and he shows her his uh, his window from where they are. And there's a reflection from the sun onto the sea and he can't really see in. Yeah. And he asks her what she can see and she says nothing, not understanding the what he's doing here. Yeah. And he tells her, well, you recently said that you could see me, you saw me kill someone in that window. And I think she then has severe doubts about what she potentially saw. Yeah. So, uh, Hollister's plan has, or ploy has worked. Yep. Uh, we then go to Hollister's home. Yeah, we have kind of skip forward later that day, I think. Yeah, they're having a romantic dinner. Yep. They start doing dancing. a bit of dancing, a bit of kissing. So the relationship, we're not sure the timeline of this, but the, well, rela- the relationship I'm not sure when moved. this moment is, but I think when we get to the next scene, I think it's a couple of weeks on. Yeah. I got that impression. Okay. So the next scene... The next scene reminded me of Jaws. Obviously, this is before Jaws, I think. Uh, yeah, it would be. But the scene is similar. It reminded me very much of the whole peaceful, idyllic, watery beach type scene. Everything's fine. And then suddenly a scream mm-hmm. breaks the friendly sort of chatter. And there's a dead body there. We find uh, Dutton's body floating. Yes. Okay. And it suggested that the... The sharks or something had bitten through the uh, yeah. Whatever. I think that's the yeah, yeah. the implication later on. He was weighed down, but that um, was mm-hmm. defeated by nature. We then see uh, General Hollister on his boat, and he hears on the radio that yeah. uh, Dutton has been ID'd. Yes, and he's aghast at this. He, he wasn't very, expecting no, this. No, he wasn't. This, this wasn't in his plan. No. So his he needs to start thinking on his feet. His strategy, his tactic has yep. changed. And we've seen him do this once before, but he doesn't get quite the same amount of time right now because Colombo is right there. Immediately, Columbo appears saying, Ahoy! Yep. Says he wants to talk to him. A horse says that he's busy, he's taking the boat out for a, a test run and invites Columbo if he wants to, to join him. Yep. Columbo gets progressively more uh, seasick and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Hollister doesn't do anything to lessen this effect. And in fact, he, he takes some pleasure and he, he drives yeah. erratically or he sails erratically. And Columbo is trying to kind of push Hollister here. He says he's here to help. The guys at the station think they've got a case against him. They've got the car. You know, they've got the stuff with the contracts. You know, well, Columbo needs yeah, to he, help him. He initially says he's here to help, but it becomes very uh, 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 evident to, to Hollister as well that Columbo is, in fact, 
making an accusation. He's del- he's delivered. He's outlined motive. He mentions the fact that the day after the body that uh, he was out on the water, and he he's done a bit of research, and wherever uh, at that area that the body was dropped, it could have. It could have went downstream, as it were, to yep. the place where it was found. So it, he has effectively said to Colombo, eh, said to Hollister, "Here's why you've got you. have got you. I think you did this, and here's why you did it." Yeah, but at this point, the seasickness kind of gets too much for him, and he asks to go back. Yeah, he even with the the accusation, the ego of Hollister, he effectively turned around and says, "Well, prove it." You've got no evidence here. You've got no, nothing on me. Yeah, that's a that's a, a attitude that he that he takes. And Colombo mentions he said there's nothing to link me to Dutton. Colombo says that he remembers seeing a car similar to the one that Dutton drove outside um, Hollister's home in the first the first evening. Yeah. Hollister handles that okay though. Well, it could have an easy trap to fall into because he immediately says I've no idea what type of car, uh, what model of car Dutton drove, but I'm assuming that there's Many of them, so yeah. he dismisses that straight away. Well, he quite, quite asks, did Columbo note down the number plate yeah. at the time, and Columbo didn't. So it's basically saying, no, you've, not, you've no proof here. Yeah. Um, where do we go from there? Well, they get back, and uh, Mrs Stewart's there, and her position has swung completely 180. She's now hardened on a position of, I didn't see anything, and I was wrong. But even although Columbo tells her about the discovery of Dutton's yep. body. Yep, she's not interested in it. At this point, she's I think she's fallen for I think she's Hollister. put all her eggs in Hollister's basket at yeah. this point. This is her new bet. She's bet on him to be the one that can make her happy. And in fact, she asks Columbo to leave her alone. Yep. Okay. Uh, we, we then go back to the, the cafe. Yeah, Columbo's there for some chilli. And this is, in fact, just about this, what they call the gotcha scene, the, the moment of realisation, the ep- uh, epiphany. Yes, when Colombo, he's talking to Bert. Yeah, um, who's also a war veteran. As also a war out. veteran, yeah. Uh, Bert pulls out uh, some war, lots of his own war yes, memorabilia. Yes, his wife's told him, um, get chuck this or I'm out. Yeah. yeah, he can't bear to get rid of it, so he keeps it in the uh, the cafe. Yeah. And he's got lots of it. And Colombo... It's real- more that he can't bear to get rid of it, this is the thing. Yeah. And Colombo realises, he, you know, he realises that someone with that attachment could not possibly... Get rid of this. Uh, get rid of something that meant so so much to them. That's right. So we go to the we, we go to the, the final scene. Well, he makes a phone call at the end of this scene. Ah, you're right. He does. He goes. He makes a phone call, and we believe Bill. He, he calls Helen, and asks to for her to attend the the museum, the military. Um, what is it? Oh, we heard at the start. It was the oh. Memorial Hall Marine Military Institute. It is. And it's an exhibition of Hollister's uh, memorabilia. Yes. Okay. Uh, she arrives and... We should really clear up the timeline a little bit because I think there's there's some criticism of how can you phone her when she's out in the boat, but I think we're comfortable that some time has passed. Yeah, there is no... It could probably have been done better by the by the writing. It was the same in the previous episode. There was, yeah. there was time gaps that you kind of had to work out backwards because it wasn't made clear. Yeah. Some people have said they, they, they assumed that the phone call happened, that the, the cafe scene happened immediately after the boat scene and then the yeah. phone call happened immediately, but that wouldn't have That been, doesn't make sense. It's not possible because she would still have been on the boat and yeah. unable to receive a call. So we assume that time has passed. Yes. She arrives at the museum. Colombo's there. She says that she will not be changing her mind. She doesn't want to answer any questions or get into any more debates or arguments about this. She's made up her mind. Yeah. And Colombo says, nope, that's fine. But I think that for you to, what is it, he says, to understand the man, you have to understand his, his past. past. Yeah. And there's a couple of things that he points out. He talks about the fact that, well, what does he say? He talks about the courage. courage. He talks yeah. about the uh, extraordinary courage that Hollister had and how it was more than his courage. It was not a normal man's courage and how it would lead to him being cool and calm under pressure and able to cope with very stressful situations. Obviously, implying that it's a type of it's a type of person who who could kill someone yeah. and act reasonably normally afterwards. Yeah. Now, we later find out that at this point, Colombo has not only worked out what happened; he's also got scientific proof and has people in place ready to make an arrest. So, the whole purpose of this intervention is for the benefit of Mrs. Stewart. Yeah. 
interestingly enough. Interesting, yeah. We do. Which makes sense given the arc of the episode is really her story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, some people do do mention that they they believe that the the episode, unlike most, which focuses on the relationship between the murderer and Columbo, and the murderer is usually the the most interesting character. In this case, I I, I think people who say this have a point that uh, that Helen's character is probably deeper and has a more interesting um, side to it. And I think it's it's not really a it's not a clean arc either. She starts off as a damaged character and she ends up damaged in a different way. So it's not like she goes there's not a happy ending for yeah. her. It's quite an interesting one. It's quite daring in a way because it's it's maybe appealing to tie up all your loose ends, but they don't do that. No. Um, we also in this scene, uh, Helen refers to him as Martin by his first name. Yeah, you can see that this is times past, and there's a deeper relationship has begun to form. Yeah. Um, so perhaps that's why Columbo feels the need to um, have this moment for her. He also that this is the, the third or the fourth time uh, reference to his appearance. Where yes, he suggests that he looks at some of the uniforms of uh, General Hollister. Suggests that such a man who would wear these these uniforms may, must be uh, fairly vain. He's almost taunting her into yeah. saying something. And well, what does she say? She says, some men, Lieutenant, do not want to look like an unmade bed. <laughs> some of us do, obviously. I'm yeah. one of those. <laughs> uh, and, but Columbo at that point straightens his tie, has a smirk. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so at this point, uh, Hollister arrives uh, whilst they're looking at his, the, the replica, the supposed replica of his famous pistol. Yeah. And Columbo tells him that he finds it very hard to believe that a man like Hollister with such an iconic weapon, would let it be stolen. Um, and certainly yeah. let, let it be stolen without any any further fuss. Yeah, and Hollister begins to look a bit troubled. You see her, he's kind he of, knows it's he's true, aware yeah. the game's up. Helen herself, she reacts, she takes a sort of step back. She does, she reacts as if it's hit her. She's yeah, she suddenly knows. made a realisation there. Yeah. Um, Columbo says that if it was his gun, he would take care of it, he would polish it, he would oil it he would have it in a display case keep it loaded Keep it loaded now. Yeah, again we're not, we're no way uh, gun nuts uh, or have little no. knowledge of guns but my understanding is that if you've got a, a display gun that's kept in a case for people to see not your main weapon of self defence Yeah, you don't keep it loaded but perhaps someone, some of our American friends or around the world can, can correct us if, if that is sure. not the case yeah Maybe again, maybe back in the seventies, it was a there was a different attitude towards gun safety. Who Perhaps. knows? Who knows? Um, yeah, this is it. That's essentially the whole case. He he makes it clear that this isn't a replica. This is the real gun, and it occurs to Hollister that yeah yeah. Well, he, yeah, he says no. What he says what well, no. What he says is that he would keep it loaded, and yep. if someone like Dutton had to come along, and deliver the news that uh, he did, this would be the gun that he would pick up and shoot him dead with. Yeah, but he doesn't believe he could then part with that gun. And what he says is that he believes that the what he's tried to do is hide the gun in plain sight. Yeah, and he says that you didn't lose the gun. This is not a replica. You, this is a murder weapon, and you've you, you've placed it in the museum. Uh, Hollister, what does he do? Oh, he's banged it out. He he just accepts that he the said, ballistics he, must have been done. Yeah, he says ballistics must have been done. Columbo gives it a nod. Some cops, some detectives, plain clothes. I didn't detect- see if it was the same one from the start of the episode or not, but certainly it's two younger police officers. No, these, these will be uh, detectives as opposed to just Perhaps. patrolmen. Uh, they come over and they are about to place the uh, handcuffs on. Yeah, and there's one last show of respect to the. Yep. The man. Columbo indicates that the handcuffs will not be required, and we get, I think, uh, Hollister acknowledges this with a, a nod. Yep. As if to say thanks. Nice touch. He then turns around as he's leaving and walks over to Helen and says that he is sorry. And I, I, yeah. I, I, it's, it's believable. You, you believe that they did have a genuine connection at that point? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I think it started out as a means of um, him controlling using, the situation. Controlling the situation yeah. But I think it probably did develop. And I, I, I believe that he said that he hadn't had a relationship. He's, um, uh, you know, getting a bit older in years and probably quite happy to, to, to settle down. So I think probably it was fairly genuine. Yeah. Um, she seemed, again, resigned to choosing the, a, a wrong, a wrong, wrong man, a wrong once, man again. once again. In fact, that's what she says to Columbo in the last, the last scene. What, tell me what happens. So she explains to Columbo that she always chooses the wrong man and, and he tells her not to, to be so down about it. He's got a niece. She kept choosing the wrong man and then eventually she found the right man and she got married and had six kids. 
and we get a brilliant challenging of this trope that we've talked about previously. And and the last line is Mrs. Stewart. Oh, the last line of Mrs. Stewart to Columbo is, "Do you really have a niece?" Yeah. Which I think is nice because it's kind of what you're all thinking. Well, he says, "Well, what sort of question is that? It's my uh, my wife's sister Cynthia's whatever it daughter, is, yeah. daughter, yeah. Uh, but he sort of smiles at it, and the two of them walk out. He puts his hand over her shoulder on the and they leave the uh, yeah. museum, and that's the the final scene. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, I enjoyed it. Before we get your reaction, yeah, a um, couple of bits of trivia. Interested to well, like trivia? Or, yes. Well, not trivia, but. I'll, I'll, I'll chat about some of the uh, the guest cast. I already talked about um, Eddie Albert. We did. Dutton himself. Again, don't know much about him. Played okay. by John Kerr. Mm-hmm. Died in 2013, aged 81. Uh, won a Golden Globe in 1957, a Tony in 1954. Um, his Golden Globe was for Most Promising Newcomer. And this was shared with none other, none other than Paul Newman, and Anthony Perkins. That's not bad company. He was obviously uh, yeah, fairly uh, well regarded. To... And again, this is prior to this episode, so it mm-hmm. shows again the high calibre of actors yeah. that they're trying to bring into the show. Much like yourself, he had a, a law degree, returned to UCLA, uh, received a law degree, uh, and practised until 2000. There you go, and he had a nice long retirement after that. Did, yeah. um, Susan Plachette, uh, or Plachette, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, who played Helen. Died in 2008, age 70, famous for appearing in the Bob Newhart show. She had two Golden Globe nominations, and an interesting fact was the original choice to play Catwoman in the uh, 1960s Batman TV series. Oh, classic. Yeah. Um, one sad piece of trivia is that I think every person associated really with this episode is now sadly passed away. There is one perhaps minor character who we can't confirm if is still alive or has passed away, but all of the main characters and the writer um, are dead. So that's a shame. That's a shame. Unfortunate. I suppose as time goes by, it's time goes more by. and more the case. Yeah. Um, we have, in terms of the director, a chap called Jack Smite. Only Columbo episode, don't really know much else about him. John Duggan was the writer. Uh, and he died in 94, aged 74. He wrote this and another episode of Columbo uh, called The Most Crucial Game from Season 2, which stars our friend Robert Culp ah. and is set in the world of football or American football. Oh, yes, I know about that. Yeah, you're a big fan, aren't you? Um, we can talk about that in that episode. But we'll you... come back to that, yeah. Yeah, who's your team? Jets. The Jets, okay, we'll, we'll come back to that in that Hopefully we'll not come back to the Jets. It's not a happy subject. Oh, okay. Um, how how did you find this episode? I enjoyed the episode. It's different to the first two. Again, we talked at the start of the second episode about the differences between the first two. This is a more striking difference. I felt it was a different tone mm-hmm. to the episode. It was not. We still had the same basic premise of you see the killing at the start, and it's working from there. But it was Columbo's skepticism at the start was very alien compared to what we'd seen previously. It was a different use of music. There was a different feel to the episode. There was a different focus because you had the the witness as a key character rather than as a side character or a supporting character. So it was very different. I still get the feeling the show doesn't quite know what it's going to do. They're still trying things, figuring things out, but it was still enjoyable. I don't think it was a bad hour of television by any stretch of the imagination. Excellent. So you'll be looking forward to next week's uh, I episode. Am. I am. And that is suitable for framing. Okay, that sounds like some sort of setup. Yeah, maybe a double entendre there, perhaps. Could we be. shall see. We yeah. shall see. Um, anything else you want to say? No, I'm, I'm quite happy. Just thanks again to everyone who's been engaging with us. Keep it up. You've got Twitter and comments on the website. Also, you can get the podcast now on iTunes, on Stitcher, on TuneIn, on Pocket Casts, wherever you choose to... Beyond Pod. Beyond Pod as well. Wherever you choose to get your podcasts, you'll find us there. If you enjoy the podcast, please consider leaving some kind of rating or reviews on these sites because it helps more people hear. And the more people that hear, the better it is for everybody. So that would be great. Thank you to everyone who's helped us so far. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. We do. Okay, Ian. Cheers. We'll see you again next week. Okay, cheers. Bye bye.
have been listening to the Colombo podcast from Heard Yet Media.